pretty good putt there, Brian. Well, just trying. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us out to the Crested Butte Club. This well, is absolutely spectacular. Well, thank you. Thanks for being here. We're glad that you could make it. And uh, I know it's a little difficult to get here, but uh, once you're here, it's... Uh, Don't want to leave. No, it's difficult. <laughs> We've got a lot of great views and uh, mountains all around us. Uh, the small uh, but quaint mining town is yeah. uh, just a couple miles down the road from us. Uh, it's kind of maintained its old historic flair. It definitely uh, has. It's a great little town. It is. And the golf course kind of sits out here uh, in a valley. We're up at 9,000 feet, but we're in a valley. That's one of the beautiful things about here with uh, obviously peaks surrounding us everywhere. So yeah. just a great place and uh, the, the scenery is spectacular and the golf is just as good. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it. I understand it's a great layout. You're going to tour us around, show us the tees, greens, Hopefully no hazards. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Well, we'll just show you where the hazards are. Right, point I mean, them we, out. You and me would never hit it in those, but we will uh, we will identify those as Mr. Jones has, uh, has designed them. Absolutely. Well, let's go tee it up. I'm excited. All right. Brian, I think that we've just reached the highest point on the golf course, am I right? <laughs> you are right. 9,003 feet right here where we're standing. And uh, the first difficult portion of this hole is the climb up to the tee box. So we've, got, winded. we've got that part down. And now we get to look at this, uh, this great golf hole. Well, this is, this is beautiful. And this is pretty typical of what you'll find on the golf course with the elevated tee boxes, correct? Yes, it is. Most of... Uh, Trent Jones Jr.'s tee boxes do sit up a little bit. Not all of them as drastic as this one, right. but what he accomplishes by that is every golfer can see their respective shot, land in the fairway, all the hazards, and there are plenty of them, uh, are available by sight. He does a great job also of using those bunkers for targets for you to aim at. Absolutely. Many of the golf holes are shaped by the bunkers. Uh, this hole, 13, uh, is perfectly shaped on the left side with three fairway bunkers. Mm -hmm. His idea was for the golfer to hit a little fade at the bunkers and bring it back into a narrow landing area. Which I know is what you're going to do. That's what I'm going to try to do. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the fairways get fairly narrow in the landing area. Yes. Is what I've noticed. Well, there are um, areas that are wide mm -hmm. and forgiving, but if you take the driver, uh, you're going to have to hit it into a smaller space than a three wood or a two iron or uh, a little straight. more conservative <laughs> play. That's right. That's right. If you're going to bring out the big stick, make sure you're in the fairway. Right. You've got plenty of tees to choose from. Four sets. Yes. The longest being what yardage? Longest being a little over 7,200 yards, and that's the black tees. Which is a pretty good test of golf with how narrow these fairways are. Certainly. And from the ladies' tees? Ladies' tees, just a little over 5,700 yards. Okay, and it's, it's got a very difficult course rating because of probably the narrowness of the fairways and the hazards. Yes. Okay. Uh, the, both of the ratings for the black tees and all the way up to the red tees are above 73. So it's, um, it is a difficult test of golf. As you can see, not just the bunkers are hazards, but off the fairway there's plenty of hazard yeah. uh, sagebrush. Yeah. So it's difficult to find it and hit it out of there if you <laughs> really get it going wild. Well, I know that you're going to hit this one right off that bunker and fade it like you told me. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Show me the way. Okay. Perfect. Just what you told me to do. I've seen you play a lot of golf and I know it's not too difficult, so let's <laughs> see another one for you. Good swing, Erica. Or you can just hit it dead straight. I mean, that works too. I'm better at hitting it straight than I am at fading. <laughs> <laughs> Great shot. <laughs> Brian, it's great you don't see a lot of cart paths on this golf course. Well, we, we enjoy it. It actually helps speed up play also. Yeah, you get to drive right out here. Easy. Well, good job negotiating that tight tee box or Thank fairway you. shot there. Um, he was nice by bowling this fairway a little bit, which helped us out a little. <laughs> yes. Knocked us back into the middle. Every little bit helps. There's a lot of hazards on this hole, yes. as there are throughout the golf course. Yes. You know, there's, there's a lot of sage and water and, and bunkers. Tell us about it. Well, most of the holes, particularly on the back side, were cut right through the sage. 
uh, the, it's a wonderful design feature, very visually appealing, right. but not so visually appealing when you have to walk <laughs> in it and find your golf find ball. Find your golf ball. But um, many of the fairways on the back nine are lined with sage, both sides. Uh, it, it just it really presents a nice, nice shape. Now the front side is more water. Yes, seven holes on the front have water somewhere. Uh, small streams that meander through the front nine um, is more of the design feature on the front right. versus the sage on the back nine. Right. Now, bunkers. Yes. Both fairway, green side. I mean, you've got a lot of them here. 85. This, this hole doesn't have any fairway bunkers, which uh, there, there's not a whole lot of room for them right. on this hole. <laughs> but we do see three up there by the green. Uh, water in front protects it. This is a this is a great approach shot here. Very well designed hole with the water and the three bunkers uh, to negotiate. But the bunkers do play a major major role. Uh, many of them are out there to help shape the hole, but also uh, can be very penalizing. Right. I mean, if you hit in there, you you better bring your sand cane. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It'll be a long day. At, at least your sunscreen and your beach towel. <laughs> it, it can get out of hand if you get in too many. So. Make a day out of That's it. That's right. Well, Erica, let's see you hit a shot uh, anywhere but that sand out there. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can negotiate all that stuff out there. No, oh, not when you hit it like that. That'll work. See if you can knock it inside of that. That looks good. Thank you. All right. Let's go put them. Well done. You sure negotiated the hazards as you predicted. <laughs> I don't know, they're pretty daunting when you're standing out there. <laughs> I guess the key is just to think that they're really not there. That's right. Forget about them. That's right. All right. Let's see a three here. Well, that would be good. Good stroke. All right. Got it. Pressure's on. Oh, I know. This is for lunch, right? <laughs> I hope not. I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> oh, that wasn't very good. That's a little short. I'm scared to make three on this hole. It's too hard. <laughs> good bird. Uh, thanks. A couple of nice shots, Brian. Well, thanks. Yours too. They're both in here pretty good. Now, this is a fairly large green. Yes. But that's fairly typical here as well. Most of them are about this size. They are um, not many real small greens out here. I would say they're a little on the bigger side than, you know, comparably to other golf courses. But there's, uh, they're pretty good size. You can, you can have some long putts on these greens. Right. And you've also got a lot of pin placements. So you can move the pin around and make the hole play differently from day to day. Absolutely. There's plenty of pin placements on this green, probably up to 10, mm -hmm. but you can see the difference if we put it down there on the front left portion or the back right portion, uh, the hole could play 30 yards longer. Now, there's not a lot of severe undulations in these greens. There's no shelving, there's, you know, things like that. There's just kind of nice subtle undulations. Yes. There's a there's only a couple holes on the golf course that have some shelves or uh, something that is is somewhat severe, but most of them are well represented by, by this green right here. Just mm -hmm. subtle break, uh, gentle undulation, not as severe as other mountain golf courses. Well, and it seems as though, to me, things should move away from the butte, which is right behind the golf course. Right. But it really doesn't even seem to be that severe away from the butte. Correct. Uh, more people get in trouble putting when they think it's going to really break hard away from the mountain, right. uh, as typical with a lot of mountain golf courses. But uh, th this one is, is not quite like that. You have to pay attention to where the butte mm -hmm. is. It's not as drastic as other places. Right. Speed of the greens is really nice. It's about yes. a 10, you Yes, said, right in there. Which is great, but you can get them faster. We do get them faster occasionally. Um, I guess we all like to have them up at 12 every now and then just to, to see what it's like. But we think a good speed for everyday play is right around 10, and uh, that's where we try to keep them. That's great. <clears throat> Knock yours in for me. Okay, I'll try. Make birdie.
It's a good looking putt. Go! Oh. The butte didn't help you quite as much no, as it No, no. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not as drastic as it appears. That's right. Tap-in pars mm. are usually good for me, though. Yeah. <laughs> Ah. How did you get it there? We both oh, well. needed Wheaties. You can tell it's 18. That's right. I'll take it though. That's right. Good round. Par's always good. Par's are good. Thanks a lot, Brian. This Thank has you. just been wonderful, wonderful good. experience. Good. Tell our viewers how we access the golf course because you guys have a lot of a, a lot of ways to access it. Yes, there are a few different ways that one can play. Um, first way up would obviously be membership. We have about 250 members, still memberships available. Right, and you've got beautiful lots of property. And, yes. And great views. This area here uh, out at the club is, is not fully developed, so we do have plenty of opportunities for uh, home sites and, and also homes. Right. Now, uh, the public can access the golf course as well. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Non-members of the club may play uh, any time after 11 in the morning. We do reserve the first three or four hours of the tee sheet for our members. But after 11 o'clock, uh, Non-members can play and they can make tee times up to two weeks in advance. So. That's right. And they can stay in one of the many wonderful lodges. A lot of lodging options, uh, resort accommodations up on the mountain, uh, bed and breakfast in town, small lodges, uh, condominiums, a lot of different choices uh, for lodging. That's right. And there's so many other activities besides the golf, which is right. spectacular, but there's, you know, hiking, biking, fly fishing. The fly fishing here is uh, really spectacular and the club uh, members of the club here do enjoy some private uh, section of a river here that we can fly fish and uh, fishing like you said hiking biking camping uh, all those things are are wonderful mountain activities and, and crested butte has an abundance of those that's right well this has just been fabulous and we appreciate you having us out we'll look forward to coming back again great all right great i'm glad you could be here Thanks thank you time.